This is Brendan Pell with Sons of Speed. I'm here with Harlan Charles. He's the product manager for Corvette. We have the exclusive uh, ability to talk to you today here at the 25th anniversary of the Corvette's uh, museum's creation. And uh, you've just given an excellent presentation on the new C8. So I've got a few questions for you. I saw a slide, I think it was yesterday, the day before, that the C7 and the, when the C7 was being introduced, you already were working on the C8. Oh, yes. And when, so when did the C8 first go into development? Well, it, dep it depends how you talk about it. When we started working on like a mid-engine concept, I mean, it was proposed, I mean, I worked on a proposal back in 2005, actually, which would have been the seventh generation car. Wow. And we actually had an approved program at one time for the seventh generation car to be a mid-engine mid -engine car. But as you know, things happen at GM, financial issues, so that program got cut shelved. So then we they, we had permission to, well, what can you do to update the sixth gen car? And as you know, we started small. As you know, we ended up doing an all new car anyway for the seventh gen. That became the seventh, but we always knew that we were gonna go back to the mid-engine concept. It's really our dream. When you launched the C7, what stage in development was the C8 car at that point? Uh, at that point, we had just st we were just starting to re kick it off again. We were doing, as you might have seen in the presentation, we were doing architecture studies, trying to find the right the, the wheel, the, just the basics of the car, what the wheelbase was going to be, the length, all that, the packaging, things like that. We're just getting started to think about as we launch the seventh gen. Now, um, the C7 car made uh, heavy use of plastics, carbon fiber, um, and, and I say plastics, I mean, you know, the composite panels. Right. Um, not a lot of, was there any fiberglass on the se seventh generation car? Well, the composite, a lot of people call it fiberglass, it's kind of the older term, but it is a, you know, composite. But the big thing that we did do with the seventh generation that enabled this new car was switching over to aluminum chassis and frame for the entire car. So we, we switched Bowling Green assembly factory over to being able to make in-house aluminum structure and that was a big enabler because we wanted we knew we wanted that for the mid-engine car so getting the, even though the frames are quite different but just getting that experience and be able to manufacture the aluminum here in Bowling Green was a big step in that path. And what um, in that that aluminum subframe you can see it on display here um, all of the different pieces that went into the engineering as Taj like to say that that's the part that gets the engineers excited is no body panels. Um, what are the panels all made? Are they all the same material or is it kind of like the C7 where you've got different panels get different materials or some of them carbon fiber? So can you kind of kind of go through what the different exterior yeah. panels are made out of? Yeah, and Corvette since the beginning, since the 1953 has a history of innovation in materials, you know, with the fiberglass. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's different um, types of composites throughout the car. Obviously the fascias have more flexibility as the bumpers and then the, the, the uh, side panels are more rigid. We have carbon fiber roof available, carbon fiber roof panel. And for the first time in the structure, uh, actually it's the rear, the rear bumper beam is carbon fiber. So we actually have added, started to filter in some carbon fiber structure into the aluminum structure. Is the, the painted roof panel you get standard on the car, is that also carbon fiber but just painted like it is on the C7? So the standard is composite and then we um, have the transparent and then we have the visible carbon. Is there a weight difference between the transparent roof and the visible carbon fiber roof, is the, which is the option? Yeah, so the, um, the standard roof is about 15 and a half pounds, the carbon fiber is about 14, and the transparent is about 17. So that's a little bit heavier. But all of them are very easy for a person to take in and out of the car and, and store in the trunk, you know, removable. It's something you can do by yourself. So they're all relatively lightweight. And actually, even the standard roof uh, is lighter than the previous gen roof. Um, I believe the previous gen roof was 11 pounds on the, because it's painted 16. carbon fiber on the C7. It's 16. Is it 16? Mm -hmm. Wow. I gotta go away mine now. I've got both the glass. I know the glass is much heavier. You can actually feel it when you when you're yeah, that's a little bit roofs. more. But but it's it's a great feature, and a lot of people forget that with Corvette. And that was one of the things you know when we did this new car, we wanted to keep that removable roof panel standard of the car, and we didn't want people to have to leave it on the side of the road or leave it home like some of these exotic cars. 
we wanted to be able to store it in the car, which you can. You know, we, one of the things we wanted to do was, even though we're doing a mid-engine car with exotic supercar attributes, was maintain the things that people love about Corvette so that you can drive it every day. It has great storage. We have two trunks now. The golf clubs, everybody, you know, you hear that from a, a, a focused audience. They want they have the two, two sets of golf clubs fit. The roof fits in the rear and gets stored in the rear, and you still have other luggage space available. So it's a great car. It's not only a track wep weapon, but it's a great car to take across country. We actually have, what, 8,000 people here did caravans all around U.S., Canada, that came here and they all travel in their Corvettes and want to make sure they can still do that when they get the new 8th gen mid-engine Corvette. So we talked about the removal roof panel. What We saw briefly at the launch of the, of the C8, but we haven't really heard much about it lately, is a convertible version. And so do you, is, it, is one still planned for 2020? Is that something that's maybe coming down the line? Can you tell us anything about the convertible? Well, there is a, a convertible coming and it's gonna be beautiful, but we have a, we're gonna have a special reveal for that later this year in the fall and we'll get all the details out then. Beautiful. But it's something everybody should be excited about. Now, the one thing that's sort of been controversial for a lot of people, um, us included, because we have to be partial to manual transmissions oh, is, is that there's only one transmission available um, and so a few questions about this I know it's kind of been a little bit beat to death but can, is it physically possible to put a manual transmission in this car in the CA? Probably not. Probably not. Not easily. Okay. And there's no plan to do that. However, I, I do um, understand where everybody's coming from me personally I've always had manuals but I think once people get a chance it's hard to without experiencing it but once people get a chance to experience this car I mean I drive it in manual mode most of the time personally but it's just a lot of fun to drive you get those quick shifts with the paddles tenth of a second we also have there's a lot of things you can do uh, with this transmission that you can't do with the uh, the older style manuals and that is there's no torque loss as you shift gears, even manually or automatically. And that enables a lot of the zero to 60 under three seconds, you know, the, un, the no tor torque loss. We used to, on the manuals, gear it so that first gear, we could do zero to 60 in first gear, which was kind of cool. It helped the zero to 60 time, but the launch probably wasn't as quick as you might have wanted. So now that's why this is among the fastest Corvettes, zero to 60 we've ever created it's it's right there very close to the zero one even even with 495 horsepower versus 755 yeah. and that's the the transmission is a big part of that the architecture is a big part of it the other thing as you go through the different modes we have the driver modes that you're probably familiar with the yep. door sport track you can change how it shifts how mm -hmm. it's programmed so what we did in the tour mode it's like you're cruising around it might shift a little slower smoother if you're putting it in automatic it'll be kind of what you're used to with an automatic but when you get to sport and track, as you go further, especially in the manual mode, you really feel those shifts. So as you shift it, you feel it in your back, you hear the exhaust pop, and it makes the car a lot of fun to drive. And I think um, once people get a chance to experience it, you know, I, I understand the, the hardcore manual person, but if it's about having fun driving, mm -hmm. I think they're going to be very happy with this. Yeah, that's the criticism is usually I'm bored to death. I have nothing, you know, I'm not in control of the car. The car is doing stuff for me. But the uh, one thing that people are holding a little hope out is that there's that patent that you guys have on uh, drive a clutch by wire system. And with cables and even maybe an electrical wire system, it seems like it's probably physically, engineeringly possible. I know you, you've got that center stack. You don't want to mess with the bone, backbone of the car, but... It seems like it would be technically possible. Is any of that stuff even being thrown around at this point in time? No, we're not working on it. Not working on it. So <laughs> we're very sorry to report the manual seems to be dead in the Corvette. Uh, no, I, again, I would say we still have a manual. It's just this kind of manual and not this kind of manual. I know. I would say I, I just, I just, I understand where I just say hold your opinion until you get a chance to drive it. That's all I would say. Yes, uh, and we will be. Uh, Definitely looking forward to that uh, the drive. Now, you know, oh, one thing I yes. have somebody say, funny, that somebody in Carlisle, we just had a Corvette to Carlisle, had the whole thing about how he misses the manual and everything. And he was, you know, he was being kind of, almost getting angry a little bit. 
But then when we were done, ta- done talking, he said, oh, I, I do have one on order. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, mm-hmm. you know, that it, I think the car uh, is going to uh, do very well as it sits right now. So, um, yes, we, we would, we, would we like to see a manual? For sure. Um, but, uh, but like I said, we'll reserve judgment on, uh, on how it drives until we get a chance to yes. drive it. Now, um, how much thought was given to the do-it-yourself mechanic? So someone who's changing their own oil, maybe their diff fluid, and how easy or difficult is it now compared to the 7th gen car to get in there and, and do things like that? Yeah, we actually put a lot of thought. You know, it's funny, the, th- the preconceived notions were some of the things you were talking about was the, the noise, the heat, easy to service that people had about older mid-engine supercars and wanted to make get rid of all that thing, keep the Corvette strength. So uh, the the underside of the car is has a lot is all sealed, which is kind of cool. But we did leave access, uh, so you don't need any additional tools to access the oil filter and the drain plug. So that be very easy to do oil changes. Uh, the um, you mean a, a manufacturer can actually design a car that you don't have to pull the engine out to change the oil? Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. And you, you can do again plug, spark plugs last you know hundred thousand miles, but you can do those uh, with that, from the top of the engine. You can, uh, by moving some, some of the panel, one of the panels in the back, you can get to the drive belt. Um, you, can, you can also get to the air filter through the uh, a panel that's in the trunk oh. that gets you to the, the engine air filter. So we, we did do a lot of things to make it relatively, um, even though the car is so new, the maintenance schedule should be what people are used to for the most part. And speaking of removing panels, the uh, I've heard, and, and if you could verify, it'd be awesome. That the high wing that's available requires that the rear face should be removed in order to install it. Is that true? Yes. And is that the real reason why you can't get it on the RC8 delivery? And is there any talk about allowing that on RC8? Yeah, and and if anybody's familiar with the previous Corvette, seventh generation Corvette, it was it's the same situation. Actually, there was a point when we first started. Um, museum delivery, they couldn't do any accessories, but has been working with them, some of the easier accessories they can do. But uh, the museum can do, a, does a great job, but they're not a full service dealership. So anything that involves drilling or removing fascias or mounting wheels and tires, you know, at this point, is that they're just not ready to handle that. But the good news is, you know, you can still do your museum delivery, and when you get back to your dealer, you could get these accessories installed at, at your hometown. And removing T2. removing the Z51 wing won't leave any holes, or I mean, how does that? So if you're, if let's say you you have, what would, if I ordered a high wing car for museum delivery, how would the back end come? Would it just come plain like a like a? Uh, no, it'll come with Z. All the cars uh, have to come from the factory complete. Okay. So it would come with the Z51. And but the high wing mounts in the same locations, uh, so there's no okay. So you won't be able to tell it ever had that right. Z51 wing, and you got something you can mount in your garage. Hey, for, you right? could say that exactly. And, and I would say the high wing is is kind of cool because it um, it has a little bit more downforce than the standard wing, but the ma- the main thing is it reduces a lot of drag being a more open wing. The the standard wing or the higher one? The higher one does oh, wow. less drag being a full wing. So you might even get a little more on the top end. Yeah. Very cool. One thing I wanted, uh, we really love is the PDR. Yes. And on the 7th Gen car, actually, that's the reason I personally waited till the 2015 model year, is I really wanted the PDR, and then I lost the cyber gray metallic color, which I didn't really like, but <laughs> I, picked, I picked black and I got my PDR. Uh, on the new one, you we did a video before the really, the launch, and one of the things that we suggested, so a lot of the stuff that we actually wanted to see on the car, you put in the car. so. You're, uh, you're sort of thinking of a lot of stuff that we're already hoping for, um, including like the my mode, the Z mode. That was that was stuff that we were hoping that would be in there. And one of the things that we suggested on the PDR was what you're doing with the the um, the dash cam mode. The auto record. Yes. Yeah. There was one other suggestion we have, and I think this is probably something you could probably do with your over the air updates now, and that is some kind of a sentry mode where the there's some uh, motion detection or bump detection that would turn on the recording uh the pdr to, to at least get some sort of 
you know, view, did somebody just hit me? Is someone trying to break in the car? Is somebody vandalizing when the car? When you're away from it. When you're yeah. away from it. Yeah, that would be cool. So is that something that's possible that you could actually implement and do an over-the-air yeah, update We've talked about things like that. It makes it a little difficult when the car is off. And one of the issues, too, is there's a lot of laws that you have to acknowledge when it's recording. Now, no recording, audio, yeah. Yeah, that's with the audio. And even, even on the auto record, it will give you a little screen, just click click the button on the steering wheel that you're okay that it's so everybody knows when they're being recorded right but um you know those are good ideas obviously and um you could even incorporate that rear view camera and have almost front and back near yeah we talked about coverage. more cameras or even uh we've talked about adding your own cameras and things like that that would, would be, be fun that would <laughs> the technology's there for that the technology's there and I'm really proud of the performance data recorder. It's something I had worked on a long time, and it took a while to get out. But even still, like you have the 2015, I think we still nobody's really come close to it. Nothing. To have a fully integrated system Nothing. that's integrated with the car, audio, video, and get all the data like a race engineer. It's and amazing. Valet mode is a great feature. People love that. You know, people have, you know, have sol solved issues, figured out what things happen. And with, that's yeah. a deterrent, by the way. And it's a deterrent. You, you turn it on, and, and you'll 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 prevent problems from ever occurring. Exactly. Um, that's one of the features I just absolutely uh, love about the car, and um, the the ability I think to um, to add stuff would be amazing. Now, in one of the slides, it was uh, an early rendering of the uh, the driver display. There was a picture of a track map. <laughs> Is that something that's going to make it to the final car? Or are you going to have a little uh, track map in your display? We don't have, that was a neat idea, again, as a sketch, but um, that would be pretty cool to have the, uh, but it, it's not in the car. It's not so currently It's just a sketch at this point. But you've moved the, into the head-up display. You, you can do, your lap timer is going to be in there, right? Right, you get the lap timer and head-up display, um, also on the cluster, and, and it's all integrated. You can also do, in the timing mode, the quarter miles or 60 stuff for the straight line guys. And it'd be right there in the head-up display. Right there in the head-up. And we even do have an, a new autocross mode, which is point-to-point -point right. instead of a full cir circuit. And then we're also going to have uh, where you can save the start-finish lines and create a database so that everybody's using the same start-finish line at different tracks so you can compare better. And uh, you'll be, there'll be a menu there and you can just pick from existing tracks. And, and co working with uh, Cosworth, uh, they're going to create a uh, kind of an official start finish line for a lot of the major. We gave him a list of some of the tracks we know Corvette people like to go to. That's amazing. To use. That'll be amazing. Is that something you're just going to be able to download? Yes. That is unbelievable. Yeah, because it's just a file. It has this extension. But yep. So you can put those files on your SD card and name them after the tracks. And then you can just, when you pick your start finish line, instead of the old way of having to, you know, get there, stop, now you can just pick the name of the track and go. Uh, yeah, you, you, it's good that you're, you're thinking of these things because that's the stuff that people who use them are always struggling with. I have files for every track, and I have to reload them on there. And, and what's a full HD now, which we didn't, we didn't have um, before. Right before it was 720, now it's 1080. We can go up to 1080. And you can record 480 or 1080, um, but the, uh, the car, memory cards are so big now, it's not really... The, the, the files are quite big, but it's not really... Uh, probably an issue now with the big SD cards. So when are uh, journalists going to be able to get in these cars and when are we going to start to see some road reviews and things along those lines? Uh, probably later this year. I mean we're just starting to uh, build cars that we consider uh, the spec, a saleable spec even though they're not going to customers they're at the level and when we get to that point uh, we'll st you'll start to see the, the magazines and the journalists get their chance to get the first impressions driving. Yeah, well, we can't wait to get into uh, some of these uh, C8s, and, and hopefully the paddles will, 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 uh, will be good enough for us to miss the, uh, the left foot doing something. But I'm Harlan. sure it will. Harlan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, this has been Brendan with Sons of Speed, and uh, another episode of Corvette Corner is in the can, and we'll catch you at the next video. Thanks so much, man. You're Thanks. Awesome. Uh, you have a dream job, my friend. I, I think so. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> it doesn't really feel like work, it. does it? There are days where it feels like work. But no, I mean, today it doesn't. That's for sure. <laughs>